ಬಂದೇಹಂ The following is a conversation with His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 21st of February, 1975, in Caracas, Venezuela. <laughs> Universal Brotherhood, which is a yoga group around Latin America, and they say they're trying to re-educate people and help bring an uh, understanding between different cultures. He's originally Mexican. Mexican. What is his name? Jose Marchel. No, what is the name of the group? The Great Yoga Fraternity, or the Great Universal Brotherhood. So, what is the purpose of this yoga? Uh, He, he explained that to, to uh, he, they want to make a synthesis of all the best practices of different cultures to present it to the people so they can have understanding without prejudice. No. Prejudice is a different thing. But what is the science? The base of the movement is to get knowledge uh, through use of their faculties in order to raise the consciousness. Which platform the conscience has? He said that he, he, uh, they do not feel that they can go very high. They feel that they are in the hands of the great spiritual masters such as yourself and others also. Or do they aim to go to the highest point? They feel the highest point is to, is self, to understand themselves and... Uh, so has he understood himself? He said uh, that... To a certain extent he feels he has achieved this, but that the, the reality is unlimited, cannot be described, and that it's more a, a certain consciousness or appreciation of life that is beyond words. It's not clear understanding. He said that, that he, they try to have a clear understanding, but he must confess that he is limited. He is limited, then what is unlimited? He says that the... The unlimited is that which always was, is, and always will be, and the unlimited is that, and the, and the limited is that which is in this material phenomenal world. That means that uh, limited is material, he says, and unlimited is spiritual. So what is the conception of the spiritual? That which is always, that which is, has been, and will be, and which is not limited to form. Yeah. Limited to form, then how is unlimited? There's uh, some other guests here, so we're going to have to arrange things just for a moment to bring the other guests in. So, uh, Okay, nice ten people from the metaphysical society that have come to see. Now, let us distinguish what is limited or what is unlimited. I am asking this in So he is saying that this material world is a combination of so many different elements and intelligence, so on and so forth. And in the center of all this, the essence is that which is eternal. And this eternal thing, it cannot have any name because then it would be limited and it is, uh, that would be a contradiction. And also it has no form. No, that eternity, uh, that is blind. It's a material world is temporary and the eternity is spiritual. That is clear understanding. Material elements, uh, just like earth, water, fire, air, sky, mind, ego, intelligence. Spiritual element is which is utilizing these material elements. Do you admit this? The others? That is the distinction between matter and spirit. Just like 
this microphone. It is combination of earth, water, air, fire, like that. But uh, the living being, he has utilized, he has combined this matter into this microphone. Is that admitted? Now, exactly like the microphone, the combination of matter, and done by some living entity, similarly, the whole cosmic manifestation is combination of matter, and there is one living being or the supreme being who has combined them and it is working. Is that admitted? Huh? So that is the difference between limited and unlimited. That I, you, are living being, we can also create something like this microphone or this big aeroplane we have created. That is limited. But there is another one who has created innumerable planets and that is floating in the air. Is it not? We are taking credit of becoming big scientists by creating one ERC 747, 500 passengers carrying. How many we have created? Maybe 100, 200. But there are millions and trillions of planets floating in the same way in the air, and those planets containing so many big, big mountains, oceans, and they are floating in the air. Therefore, we have got our limited brain, and he has got unlimited brain. Is that correct? That suggests that he has a brain. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so as soon as he has got a brain, he is a person. Therefore God is person. For eso Dios es una persona. Ultimately. Ultimately. Just like the government. Government is in person. But the president is person. Similarly, the cosmic manifestation, the energy working, they are all in person, but the brain behind is is person. That is the distinction between person and in person. You said that uh, it is person ultimately. What does that mean ultimately? Ultimately, just like the government is in person, but ultimately the president is person. The government is going on under the order of the president. Therefore, in person and government is not so important as the personal president is in. Another example, just like the sun and the sun sign and the sun goal, three things. The sun sign is impersonal, and within the sun glow there is sun god. So in one sense they are all one, means heat and light, but the Sun sign is different from the sun glow. When just like here is sun sign in this room, but that is not sun glow. Therefore, simultaneously they are one and different. Is it clear? Any question about this? He says that if God is a person, how how can we understand as there's a common saying that God is and also is not. God is person that I've already explained, that the government is impersonal, the president is person, but the president is more important than the whole government. 
just like a man in the court of the government is condemned to die. So there is no law in the government which can save him. But if the president shows him mercy, he can save him. Therefore, the president is more powerful than all the laws in the government. Therefore, he is important. What does he say? He said there are many examples where the, the laws of the government are superior to the present. For example, in America, where Nixon was uh, pulled down by the laws. But one law. He was president, he was powerful than the government. When he resigned from the presidency, then he became less important. This is a crude example. The another example is that the sun sign is universally spread, and the sun sun glow is situated in one place. So which is important, the sun glow or the sun sign? And just like this light is situated in one place, and the illumination is spread, what, what is important, the illumination or the lamp? The fire is one place, and the fire, light and heat is expanded. So the fire is localized, and the light and heat is expanded, many miles. <coughs> so which is important, the fire or the heat and light? Therefore God is person. But he is not a person like you and me. But his personality is expanded, just like the heat and light of the fire is expanded. Similarly, whatever we see, that is the expansion of God's energy. Just like there are many big businessmen, the man is person, but he is conducting hundreds of factories, big, big area. The factories are important or the man is important. If an ordinary person in this material world becomes so important and personal, you can just imagine how the person of God is important in spite of unlimited expansion of this material world. No? What is the idea? The person is ultimately important. The impersonal feature is there, just like the impersonal feature, sun sign. But the sun glow, and within the sun glow there is sun god. The sun sign is the expansion of the energy of the sun globe, and within the sun globe there is sun god. So which is important, the sun globe, the sun god, or the sun sign? Which is important? The sun sign is important. All of them. Huh? All of them. That's all right. But comparatively, the sun god is the source of everything. Therefore he is important. Therefore God is expanded by his energy, and God is the energetic. There, but comparatively, although there is no difference between the energy and the energetic, the energetic is more important than the energy. When there is sun sign, it is to be understood the sun globe is there and the sun god is there. But there, in this sense, the sun god, the sun globe, and the sun sign, they are not different, one, because every one of them has the same quality, heat and light. But still, here is the sun sign. It does not mean the, the sun god or the sun globe is here. The sun globe is 93 million miles away from us. So therefore it is to be understood they are simultaneously one and different. This is the pleasure. He said that you said that God expands, but this implies that God modifies himself or changes. No. That is God. He can expand unlimitedly 
still he remains as he is. That is that is means unlimited. Just like if you have got hundred dollars in your pocket, then if you spend one dollar, one dollar, one dollar, then ultimately you become zero. But about God, it is said, Purnasa, Purnamadaya, Purnameva, Abhishishate. That means you take a uh, hundred dollars, still the hundred dollars is there. Similarly, God as He is, He can expand Himself in millions and millions uh, separately, still He is the same million. That is called God. If we take God in our conception that I have got hundred dollars, I spend hundred dollars, it is zero. But God is not like that. God can expand Himself as God uh, unlimitedly, still He remains the same. There is another nice example, just like you take one candle and you lit up another candle, you lit up another candle, another candle, and millions of candles. But this candle remains the same powerful, and all the candles lit up, they are also same powerful. But for our understanding, we take the original candle as first candle, the next and second candle, the third, fourth, fifth, and the millions. But each candle is equally powerful, and the original candle is still there. So by this expansion, God does not diminish it. That is the meaning of God. And that is the meaning of unlimited. How can we understand the difference between personality and individuality? And if God expands Himself in everything, then He must be inside all of His creation. Yes, that is defined. The God is situated in everywhere. But you are not situated everywhere. You are situated within your body. I am situated within my body. The pains and pleasure of my body you cannot feel. Neither I can feel the pains and pleasure. But God is everywhere. Therefore He can understand what is your pains and pleasure, what is my pains and pleasure, his pains and pleasure. That is something. That is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. And now, uh, what is that verse? Khetragancha vimāna viddhi sarva khetri subhārata khetragancha Japi Manga Bhidhi. Chetra Gyam Shapi Mam Bhidhi Sarva Chetra Su Bharata Chetra Chetra Bi Yor Gyanam Jatta Gyanam Mata Mama. Alma and Super Alma. God is Super Alma. <laughs> <laughs> You've mentioned pain within the body. What is the origin of pain and the origin of imperfection? Origin of pain means as soon as you come to the material world, to the origin of pain. Just like the, it can be appreciated very nicely. Uh, just like water. Water is sometimes painful and sometimes pleasing. Is it not? Do you agree or not? No, I, I just try to. Water is the same thing, but sometimes it is painful and sometimes it is pleasing. Is it not? The, how the same thing becomes pleasing and painful? This is circumstantial. The same thing is pleasing and sinful, the same thing is painful under different circumstances. Similarly, fire. Fire is sometimes pleasing and sometimes painful. The fire is the same, but circumstantially it becomes painful and uh, uh, pleasing. Just like in winter season, the fire is pleasing. And in summer season, the same fire is painful. Now, these feelings of pains and pleasure is due to this material body. Therefore, 
the material body is the cause of pains and pleasure. So if you do not get this material body, you remain in your spiritual body, then there is no more pain and pleasure. So that means the origin of pains and pleasure is to our attachment to this material body. So if we can somehow or other get out of this material body, then there is no more pain and pleasure, or it is simply pleasure. Therefore, in the Vedanta Sutra, it is said, Anandamaya Abhyasa, by nature, uh, the spirit soul is joyful. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is also said, Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Nasochati Nakanga. So, pleasure means absence of pain. So, in your spiritual identity, there is no pain, therefore, it is simply pleasure. Therefore, our endeavor should be how to get uh, our, again, original spiritual body. Spiritual body is there already. It is covered by the material body. But somehow or other, if we stop the covering of the material body, then we are simply in pleasure. Therefore, our only attempt in this human body should be how to revive our spiritual body. And that process is Krishna consciousness. That from that verse, man janma karma meditam jujanati tattata tattata dehang punar janma naiti maameti om dhyam. Janma karma chaameti vyam evam jhobeti tattata chaktva dehang punar janma naiti maameti sojana. So if you simply understand Krishna, then you revive your spiritual body. How or why did this uh, spiritual body become covered by the material body? How your body is covered in a different dress when you go to the prison house. When one goes to the prison, he has to keep his dress separately and take the prison dress. So anyone who comes into this material world, he has to take a material body. This is the law. Unless you have got this material body, how you can feel pleasure in material sense and enjoyment? Just like on a stage, if you are going to play, you have to take dress according to the play. Therefore, this material body is compared with the dress that is stated, I know, Vasaṁ si jinnāni jathāvyā. Vasaṁ si jinnāni jithāvahāya navāni ganāti naro parāni jatā sarīrāni vihāya jinnāni anyāni saṅyāti navāni dehi. Just like we are sitting, Ladies and gentlemen, here, yeah. yeah, every one of us, we have a different dress. The su- dress is superficial, but as ladies and gentlemen, human beings, we are one. Similarly, each one of us can have a different dress. So the living entities, they are in different dresses only. And the dresses are calculated 8,400,000 different forms. In the water there are nine hundred thousand different dresses. Similarly, uh, the trees and plants, the two million different types of vegetation. Uh, there are insects. There are eleven one million one hundred thousand species. Similarly, birds, there are one million. And Pakshina Daslakana. Daslakka means one million. One million types of birds and three million types of beasts and four hundred thousand forms of human beings. In this way, the living entity is passing through different dresses. And the best dress is this human form. Because in this dress you can understand what is God, what you are, what is your relation with God, and then you can act 
and go back to home, back to home. Therefore, if this dress, in this dress, I am living being, you are living being. So we are in this human form of dress. We have got developed consciousness. If we miss the opportunity to understand God, <coughs> then again we are put into the cycle of this evolution. We should not therefore misuse this form like other forms. We should utilize it properly to understand the unlimited God and our relationship with God and act according. That is perfection of life. How can we relieve ourselves of material pain and live in spiritual pleasure? Yes. As soon as you do not accept this material body, you have no connection with material pain and pleasure. Uh, he has understood from Bhagavad Gita that Krishna says that as you approach me, I present myself. So in that sense, can this movement be compared to the ultimate consciousness of Christ? The consciousness of Christ consciousness. Yes, there is no difference between consciousness of Christ and Krishna, provided we follow them. Christ is speaking as Son of God, and Krishna is speaking as God. So there is no difference. The truth, the Father speaks or the Son speaks, the truth is the same. He understands that this Krishna consciousness is the highest state of the mind. Now he would. He would he requests that you, if you could explain to the people how one can achieve Krishna consciousness living in one's own home uh, with one. In other words, for those who are outside the temple, have, they have their jobs and they live in their houses. And how can they achieve Krishna consciousness? It is very easy. You chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> oh, how do we chant Hare Krishna? That you are seeing, I am chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. They all are chanting. What is this? What is the meaning of this mantra, Hare Krishna? Hare means, oh, the energy of God, and Krishna, oh God, kindly accept me again. I am fallen in this material world. Ah. That's all. She she says that she sees this is a mantra, and from her point of view, it seems like we're repeating this mantra over and over mm-hmm. again. There's some them, for example, in some tribes, they are in different rituals. They are chanting different things. So she would like that is her opinion. He is not. She is not authority. Huh? Like an this is the statement in the uh, Bhagavad Gita. Satatam kirtan tangmam. Find it. Satatam kirtayan to mam. Yatantas cha jhira prata. Namasyantas cha mam bhaktya nitya jukta upasate. You want to know if, if you. It's the same thing to chant Om or to chant I am. I am. I am. What is the state that I am? He and says your directly. Story. Your story. He says directly, Satatam Kirtan Tangamam. Krishna says, you always chant my name. So why should you go to other things? God says that you chant my name. So why should you go to other things? He says, in, in this Western hemisphere, the Supreme Authority is the Saint Saint Germain, and he says that we should chant, I am. That's a quote from the Bible, meaning uh, apparently when they ask God, who are you, and God said, I am, that I am. What you are? But what you are? I am, you are thinking, but what you are? You know what you are. They mean, I think they mean that it's like, that's a quotation from God. No, no, this must be your sense also. You are saying, I am, but if I ask you what you are, I am that I am. I am that I am. But you do not know what you are. Then you are a nonsense. <laughs> you say I am, but I mean, if I ask what you are, you cannot reply. Then you are a nonsense. No. You must explain what you are. Then I am. It's every time that we say I am. But you must explain what you are. Yes, sir. What every is that? Every time that we say I am, we must be conscious of what we are saying that we are. And it must that I am asking you. Then what do you are? Why don't we look at it this other way? You say the name of uh, God is Krishna. Now that is already separated. Yeah. Now, now another no, question. What, what she he says, says, I am. No, what she says. But I am, I am, I am asking, I am also I am. I am asking you what you are. May I explain? She, say, she says that God says that His name is I am. Huh? As a name. 
What is that? He said that I am is the name of God. God never says like that. Where is he? If you must quote some authority, where it is. He said in the Bible, when the, when the, some people were leaving and they said, who is sending us, who is sending them, uh, God said, tell them that, uh, that it is the God of your fathers and that I am. What? That I am in the Bible it is said. Yeah. Where it is. Exodus, Moses. Yeah. In Mount Sinai. No, Bible it is said. It's in there, yes. Huh? It's in there. What is that? The God said that, that I am who am. No, no, God said I am, you say I am, that is all right. But God says I am, we can understand God. I am means God. But, but he, what you are? So he said, this is my name, and this is my name for, for forever. He says, he says like that. Huh? That's the way it's translated. I am who I am. Yavada. But so far I know the Christ says that I am the Son of God. We can understand. See, is there any difference? God says, or Christ says, that I am the Son of God. So the Father is different. The father can say, I am, and the son also can say, I am. But everyone is I. But what is the relation between this I and that I? That is wanted to know. I am a particle of God. Huh? That is Therefore I am particle, he is whole. There is a difference. When God says, I am, and I say, I am, there is difference. I am partic- partic- particular, particle I am, and his whole I am. A millionaire says, I am. And his servant says, I am. But both the eyes are the same. So God is great. He says, I am. He is great. I am. And I say, I am. I am small, I am. Therefore, this I am and that I am is different. This I am. When I say, I am, and God say, I am, this I am and this I am is different. So not always I am the same. So far I am concerned, my identity, your identity is concerned. That is, all right, one. But you I am and I I am, not different. The soul as soul it is all right, but as particle as whole they are different. Yes, that is, that is to be understood. God says I am means I am, I am the whole. And I say I am, I am the particle. So therefore we should understand that when I say I am and when God says I am, they are different. Your identification, my identification, my conscience is different. And because we are different, therefore we are considering what is the ultimate goal. So in spite of difference, you can say I am, I can say I am, he can say I am. But that does not mean there is no difference. My I am I am different from you I am. This is to be understood. I can say I am, you can say I am, but this I am and that I am is different. May I ask some question please? Master, perhaps it seems to me that we have a sort of misunderstood. These people is trying to inquire whether or not a sort of a mantra, I would say invented here in the Western Hemisphere, or a so-called master, is or not good for realization of the self. But I'm, I'm thinking in other terms of, of the question. It is perhaps more suitable to make the question, the question, not the affirmation, who am I? Perhaps is the best of the mantras, instead of affirming I am, because we cannot realize... That's all right, but you are basing your knowledge, perhaps, therefore you are imperfect, perhaps. That means you are imperfect. Your statement will not be accepted. Because you are imperfect. You say perhaps, maybe. So this is not knowledge. This is not knowledge. This is ignorance. As soon as you say perhaps, maybe, that means you do not know what is the actual thing. Knowledge must be perfect. There is no question of perhaps it may be. No, that is not knowledge. That is speculation. speculation. That is speculation. speculation. That is not knowledge. But which so no, this is the, because you are sitting perhaps, therefore your knowledge cannot be accepted. No, no, I'm, I'm just asking the question whether or not 
the, the right question could be, who am I? Yeah, that's nice. I myself am. That's nice. Therefore I say, when you say I am, and when I say I am, I must understand who I am. You must understand who you are. That is that, that I am saying. That simply saying I am is not the final. It's not the final. Everyone is I am. But he must know what I what that I am. That is knowledge. If you blindly say I am and you do not know what you are, then what is the use of using I am? No. Therefore no, I ask what you are. Just that everyone has to decide. Yeah. That, that decide. That decision is the, that is knowledge. Simply saying I am. Everyone can say I am. What is that? He okay. must know what you are. That yes. is it. That is it. I agree. Therefore I'm asking what you I are. I agree. I am just mentioning that I am is the name of God and then you no, no, no. add the I am is not the name of God. That is identification. The that is and the identification. Be unto you. Uh, God can say I am. You can say I am. But that does not mean you are God. Jesus Christ said that if you establish what you are, after you say, I am. That's all right. Everyone is saying, I am. Right. Everyone is saying, in the ordinary dealing, I am. That is there. But that does mean a different I am is the same. You decree it. You decree what, what you are. You decree. With I am, you decree. You make that, a decree. That degree is already there, just as in the Bible. God is great. You are not great. Therefore, you, I am, and God, I am different. Is it possible to sing the Mahamantra for someone else? Who has died? And will it have the same effect? If you say, I am servant, and God says, I am master, then it is perfect. Uh, you said that when I say I am, when you say I am, they are different. But she understands that the essence of everyone is the same. That's all right. But it's still. In, in the essence, in this essence means the spirit. So God is the supreme spirit and the particle spirit. So far, spiritual constitution is concerned, God and the living into one. Both of them are spiritual. But the power, God's power and your power is not the same. It is said in the Bible, so far I remember, God said, let there be creation. There was creation. Can you do that? Let there be creation and create something. Therefore, that when God says I am and you say I am, that is different. So I means person. As person, he is also person. And I means person, you are also person. But that person and you person is different. Is my body quality. She's saying that uh, when she says I am, she doesn't mean I in the sense of the lower self, but in the higher self. She means that. That we have admitted God is spirit, I am spirit. No, both of them I. But God's power and your power is not equal. God said, let there be creation, there was creation. But you say, let there be chapati, there will be no chapati unless you are. <laughs> you have to work for it. The deal, God is a whole and we are parts and we are evolving to integrate ourselves with that the That is all right. But as part, just like the finger, you can say part of the body. But it is not the whole body. The finger, finger is working just like I'm rubbing the head. The finger is... But the head is defined, the finger is defined. But if you take the whole thing, it is body. So without all the parts, it would not be the body, so we are all parts of the That's whole. all right. Still, this is axiomatic truth. Part is not equal to the whole. That, but, but we are in evolution. Huh? Okay, evolution. No, that is not evolution. The part is part eternally. And the whole is whole. Eternal. So she's asking, does that mean that one does not integrate himself with the whole when he becomes involved? No, you are already in the whole. What is that? So therefore we're all one. Huh? <laughs> one and different. That is our fear. That's like the one small, small screw is in the machine. So the whole is one. But the small screw is not equal to the whole machine. But the screw cannot be called the whole machine. So we are part of this whole. Yes, yeah, that is, that is. Yeah, part of it. Mama Ivanga Jeeva Bhuta, Jeeva Loka Sanatana. Mama Ivanga Jeeva Loka Jeeva Bhuta Sanatana, Manat Sastani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karsati. 
He's saying they did the same thing. They want to know if... if it is same thing, but why is Manasa stand in the Ani Prakriti standing? Why is struggling here? God doesn't struggle. Because, because there was a misunderstanding. <laughs> Who's misunderstanding? So he said that, uh, that, uh, you, that we have given the name Krishna to God, but actually uh, uh, there are so many names of God that anything... Uh, it doesn't matter what the name of God is. It can be I am or it can be uh, uh, whatever it may be. Just like in India, he's understood that in India there are so many different names of God. God. Do you think so, that uh, uh, I am is the name? Uh, that's all right. Allah is name, Krishna is name, Jehovah is name. But I am is not name. Si, si es un nombre. If I ask you what is your name, you say I am. Is it very clear? What is your name? I am. No, no, I mean to say they said that I am is the name of God. So is it practical? If I ask your name, what is your name? I am. He said, he said that, say, for example, suppose that his parents were crazy and gave him the name I am. But there is no business in crazy. We have no business with crazy. <laughs> All right, what is the time now? We have no business with crazy. This is practical. This is practical. If in the court the judge inquires, what is your name? And if you say, I am. He immediately says he's a crazy man. Get him out. This kind of knowledge is not no, no, no. If he does not like to accept Krishna as the name of God, he 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 has got his name. Say Jehovah or Allah. That is all right. There's a, it's not they don't like Krishna. They they like Krishna very much, but they're saying that you know everything. No, no. They must have some name of God. I am is not the name. That is false conception. Huh? They say something very personal. No, when we ask name, that is personal. God. God means controller. God is not name. Just like the president, Mr. Ford, that is name. And president is the controller. Every controller has got name. Todo controlador tiene su nombre. Why the supreme controller will not have a name? That is ignorance. She said that Christ said that I am the way, so on and so forth. Well, every guru is the way to approach God. That's a fact. But he has got his name, Christ. So why do you deny this name? Christ says that means Either you take him anything, but he has a name, Christ. No? What is this? <laughs> that is your conception. It is not Bible's concept. Bible says the Son of God is Christ. Even you can create by mental concoction and anything. But if you refer to the Bible, the name is Christ. Everyone says, all Christians say, all Christians say, they just says Christ. Why do you deny it? Everyone has a crisis. No, we don't agree with all these things. If we agree with Buddhist consciousness. Huh? If we agree with Buddhist and consciousness. Krishna consciousness. No, no, whatever consciousness may be, I, I say that in the Bible it is said that uh, Son of God is Christ. His name is Christ. How you can deny the name? Well, that is their interpretation. Christ means I am. They want to interpret in their own way. There is name. How can we deny it? He is saying that you said that we are we have a material body and also a spiritual body. So he wants to know if the spirit and matter are born simultaneously, or if the spirit is born and later the or if the matter is born, the material body is born and later the spirit comes. From spirit the matter has come out. Just like God said, let there be creation. So God was there and creation later on. So God is spirit and creation is matter. He is understood from Indian philosophy, what he thinks is Indian philosophy, that uh, that you cannot give God a name because that would be limiting God. 
No, you don't give God name, but God is named by His action. Just like Krishna. Krishna means all attract. Krishna means all attract. That is the quality of God, that He is all attract. Similarly, Allah. Allah means the great. The God is great, therefore He is called Allah. So actually God has no name, but according to His accent He has name. Thanks you very much, and you consider it a great privilege to have been here today. Thank you for your coming. God is all good for you.